welcome to ias by heart this is our prelims he series one stop solution to crack prelims this is our second enrollment class and today we are going to discuss about 10 new topics our very first question is the term allelopathy describes option a inhibition of the sporulation of the pathogen by the host option b inhibition of growth of one species by another by producing the toxins option c inhibition of one species by another by preventing reproduction option d altering the reproductive cycles of one organism by other here the term allelopathy uh, doesn't in, uh, mean that the sporulation of the pathogen as well as it doesn't mean the terms of inhibition of one species by another so option a and c are wrong option d also wrong because in option d uh, they are giving that altering the reproductive cycle of one organism by uh, another this is not the function of allelopathy uh, then what is meant by allelopathy allelopathy means uh, plants secrete some enzymes which is detrimental to some pest so that's mean by allelopathy so that's our option b inhibition of growth of one species by another by producing the toxins here is our explanation see plants are secreting some toxic enzymes which are allergic to some species called allelopathy so in this term allelopathy it is a naturally occur it is not not only intentionally created or it is not intentionally secreted uh, for example take bt cotton bt cotton is the best example of allelopathy in this allelopathy uh, we are using this to promote sustainable agriculture in this bt cotton bt cotton means bacillus thuringiensis cotton what is meant by bacillus thuringiensis see it is a spore forming bacteria it is mainly found in the soil it produces a protein uh, that are toxic to insects this bacillus thuringiensis is spray it on to the plant to protect them from pest so farmers use this bacteria the practice of using this bt began in the year 1996 this facilitated the production of cry proteins in the plant that helped to kill pest there are some issues like european southwestern corn borer tobacco and cotton budworm pink bollworm and colorado potato beetle so these type of worms that are largely destroyed the crop uh, which will affect our farmers so bacillus thuringiensis is protected the crops against such pest bt cotton this is a variety of genetically transformed with the gene to protect the plants from boll worms see this is the image image of boll worm this boll worm affect the content plantation um, this boll worm creates a lot of problems in cotton cultivation which will leads our farmers to suicide itself so this is a major issue so in order to avoid this issue only we are bring this cotton bt cotton so in this bt cotton this cause less damage to the plants because this worms are uh, lethargic and sleepy in manner moreover this toxic proteins produced by the crops are indigested by the pest which kill them thereby protecting our crop moreover there are some controversies among this gm uh, genetically modified or bt cotton crops the problem here is whether making them is ethical or not whether food producer with them is safe or not whether such food should be labeled and if so how whether agricultural biotech is needed to address world hunger so maybe this affect our environment so these are the major controversies in this crops there are also issues specific to bt transgenic crops so next question is choose the correct statement about taj trapezium zone the central government in exercise of the powers conferred under under the environment protection act 1986 has constituted the ttz pollution prevention and control authority in 1998 ttz is a defined area of around the taj mahal to protect the monument from pollution it comprises monuments including three world heritage sites the Taj Mahal, Agra Fort, and Fatehpur Sikri. So here, which of the above statement is are correct? 
here this ttz this was created on the basis of environment protection act this is a right statement and second one ttz is a defined area of around taj mahal to protect the monument from pollution this is also a right statement this is a defined area of around 10000 square kilometer so it comprises of three world heritage sites namely taj mahal agra and fatehpur sikri so all the three answers are right so our option is d so here is our explanation see central government uh, created this ttz on the basis of environment protection act 1986 this is a defined area of 10400 square kilometer this ttz is like a trapezium in shape uh, which is located around these three sites taj mahal agra fort and fatehpur sikri the geographic limits of the ttz is is it is divided in the agra division of the state of uttar pradesh and the bharatpur division of the state of rajasthan recently supreme court permitted northern railways to cut 400 trees in this ttz area for the construction of uh, delhi and agra railway track in the condition of mandatory compensatory afforestation what is meant by mandatory compensatory afforestation for example uh, if uh, this railway board or uh, northern railways uh, want to cut this 400 trees means they have to cultivate or plant uh, above 400 that means uh, uh, 800 trees or 1000 trees they have to plant so this is called as mandatory compensatory afforestation so this was done in this process so here is our background in this background uh, in 1996 there was a pal this pal was to protect the taj mahal from environment pollution because uh, in that area there are the use of usage of coals and coke in industries are huge amount so in order to avoid this uh, in 1996 there was a pal uh, which is play, which was placed under our supreme court so in that order supreme supreme court ordered that to switch over from coal coke to natural gas and relocating them outside the ttz or shutting down see this is our ttz zone this is a shape like trapezium so in this trapezium area only we are having our three monuments that's our taj mahal agra fort and fatehpur sikri so our third question which of the following statements regarding green climate fund is are correct first one it is intended to assist the developing countries in adaptation and mitigation practices to counter climate change second one it is founded under the aegis of unep oecd adb and world bank select the correct answer using the code given below so in this question see here this is our green climate fund so this is this is a important fund uh similar fund like amazon fund also there so we will discuss in another session so first one in this green climate fund the aim was to achieve uh, to reduce the carbon emission moreover this green climate fund to assist the developing countries in adaptation and mitigation practices to counter climate change this is our right option but it was not founded under the agency agencies of unep oecd and adb is founded under the aegis of unfcc so our uh, answer is a so here is our explanation see this green climate fund is within the framework of unfcc the mechanism to distribute money from developed to developing world for what reason in order to assist the developing countries to adaptation and mitigation practices to counter the climate change this gcf was an operating entity of the financial mechanism of unfcc about unfcc this unfcc is a international environment treaty which was signed on earth summit held in rio de janeiro in their 1992 the objective is to stabilize greenhouse gas concentration in the atmosphere at the level that would prevent the dangerous anthropogenic interferences with the climate system moreover uh, this gcf that's our green climate fund it is intended to center piece of efforts to raise climate finance 
of 100 billion dollars a year by 2020 and moreover this fund will promote the paradigm shift towards low emission and climate resilient development pathways by providing support to developing countries so this is about our gcf our next question is consider the following statements regarding the national board for wildlife first option national board for wildlife is a statutory organization constituted under the wildlife protection act 1972 second one the national board for wildlife is chaired by the ministry of environment third one primary function of the board is to promote the conservation and development of wildlife and forest it serves as a fourth one it serves as a apex body to review all the wildlife related matters in this question we have to choose the correct code first one nbwl that's me nothing that's nothing but national board for wildlife that's a statutory organization constituted under wildlife protection act 1972 that's the right answer second one national board for wildlife is chaired by ministry of environment is a wrong statement because it is chaired by our prime minister third one the function of the primary function of the board is to promote the conservation and development of wildlife and forest this is a right statement and then fourth statement it serves as a apex body to review all wildlife related matters so this is also right question sorry right uh, option so by eliminating second one we are getting our answer as 1 3 and 4 so our answer is c and here is our explanation see national board for wildlife is a statutory organization constituted under the wildlife protection act 1972 So this is a very important body uh, that's maybe apex body to review all wildlife related matters and moreover they approve the projects in and around the national parks and the sanctuaries this national board for wildlife is chaired by our pm and moreover it is uh, assisted by assisted by ministry of environment that is nothing but vice chairman is our ministry of environment uh, there is one committee called as standing committee in which this committee approves all the projects falling within this protected wildlife areas moreover this standing committee uh, the formation of the standing committee does not specify in any law so that's the only problem in this nbwl moreover the functions of this board the function of this board is to promote the conservation and development of wildlife and forest uh, they have the power to review all wildlife related matters and approve projects in and around national parks and sanctuaries etc uh, in this case uh, if if you want to alter the boundaries in national park and wildlife sanctuary means you can't do without the approval of nbwl so there are a lot of pending cases are there in this uh, nbwl uh, such cases some cases like hydroelectric projects, projects in northeast india and the highway and the road projects through several wildlife sanctuaries and national parks and iron ore mining in Chhattisgarh and Jharkhand. Uh, so the, there are around 200 pending projects for the approval for clearance from this board. Moreover, uh, current statement of uh, current situation of NBWL is a, it is a mammoth body, uh, but it its working was such that it resulted in slow and shady processing of environmental clearances. The government proposed and partially implemented a, a small N NBWL and synergized with the government's declared goal of speedy processing of environmental clearances. Our next question is, choose the correct statement about paraquat. Paraquat is, a, is not a toxic chemical. Second one, it is widely used as a herbicide, primarily for weed and grass control. Third one, paraquat consumption leads to pulmonary fibrosis and patients find difficulty in respiration. Similarly, kidney failures occur. So here we have to select the right answer. So first one, paraquat is not a toxic chemical. This is a wrong one because paraquat is a toxic chemical. It is used as a herbicide primarily for weed and grass control is the right, sta right statement. And third one, this paraquat consumption leads to pulmonary fibrosis and moreover it created a problem uh, like kidney failures and find difficulty in respiration also. So by eliminating first one, we are having our answer as 2 and 3. 
option b is the right answer so here is our explanation see paraquat is a herbicide used in agriculture field it is a toxic chemicals it is widely used as a herbicide primarily for weed and grass control moreover this consumption leads to pulmonary fibrosis and kidney failure as well as difficulty in respiration uh, since september 2017 many death cases have been uh, registered in chattisgarh and jharkhand and western odisha because of this paraquat see here uh, in western odisha and chattisgarh uh, the majority of people they are dependent upon the upon our agriculture so crop failure and family disturbance often drive some people to commit suicide so for the sake of suicide uh, they drink that paraquat so which is very toxic and also which cause many health uh, effects like uh, kidney failure etc etc so moreover this paraquat is easily available at homes as well as neighbor shops not only suicide cases uh, moreover many accident victims are also occurred uh, due to this paraquat because in agriculture field while sprinkling this paraquat uh, some people consume or observe this uh, paraquat so it will cause a disaster to some people moreover this is a paraquat it has banned in 32 countries including switzerland uh, where herbicide producing company uh, syngenta is based paraquat also figures on the list of 99 pesticides and herbicides the supreme court to ban in an ongoing case moreover uh, it is used for 25 crops in india whereas it is approved to be used on only 9 crops by the central insecticide board and registration committee actually this is a violation of indian insecticides act so far as it, uh, only kerala has banned this uh, paraquat the next question which of the following statements is or correct first one warm and moist environment favors decomposition whereas low temperature and anaerobic inhibit decomposition second statement the number of tropic levels in the grassing food chain is restricted because the transfer of energy across subsequent tropic is limited select the correct answers using the given code here uh, first thing this warm and moist environment conditions only favor for uh, decomposition uh, but in cases of cold conditions a decomposition is not that much level because in warm and moist conditions the temperature is very high as well as uh, moisture content also very good uh, which is available for uh, bacteria Uh, bacteria has a capacity to uh, live in a very high temperature and very high moisture conditions so first statement is right statement and our second statement the number of tropic levels in the grazing food chain is restricted yes this is restricted because of uh, transfer of energy see here see here uh, this is our uh, tropic level tropic level 1 tropic level 2 tropic level 3 and tropic level 4 here uh, while consuming this uh, leaf by the moth caterpillar it gets only 10 percentage of energy from this living oak leaf 90 percent of this energy is uh, held within this living oak leaf for respiration and some other purpose uh, while this in insectivorous bird consume this moth moth caterpillar means this insectivorous birds Uh, can get only 10% of energy from this moth caterpillar and remaining energies are used by this moth caterpillar uh, this is called as a 10% energy law so for example here 10% energy means uh, this moth caterpillar gets 1% energy and then this insectivorous birds uh, gets up to 0.1% energy this how gets 0.01% energy so this is a 10% energy law by applying this concept here the number of tropic levels in the grazing food chain is restricted because of transfer of energy uh, for example uh, in the cases uh, that how cases if that how is consumed by some other species means the energy will be drastically reduced 0.001 like that so it's not occurred in this grazing food chain so our answer is c 
both 1 and 2. So, here is our explanation. See, decomposition is largely an oxygen recurring process. Yes, that's right. As well as this decomposition is controlled by chemical composition and climatic factors. See, this is the important one. Temperature and soil moisture are the most important climatic factors because uh, while we are getting some high temperature and high soil moisture means that will be a favorable condition for bacteria survival. So, warm and moist environmental are beneficial for bacteria growth. So, as per this, our first statement is right. And second one, only 10% of energy is transferred to each tropic level from lower tropic level. So, this is also a right statement. So, second statement also right. See here, there are some tropic levels such as producers, herbivores, primary carnivores, secondary carnivores in the grazing food chain. Such levels in the food chain are limited because only a limited amount of energy that is 10 percent is transferred to the next level. So, our option second one is right. So, our answer is C, both 1 and 2. Our next question, which of the following represents the difference between grazing food chain and detritus food chain? First one, source of energy in both the food chains are different. Second one, grazing food chain is only found in terrestrial ecosystem while detritus food chain is found in terrestrial as well as aquatic ecosystem. Uh, select the correct answers. Here, uh, what is meant by grazing food chain and what is meant by this detritus food chain? Grazing food chain means it starts from the uh, living things. Uh, it, it consumes a living part. This detritus food chain means it consumes from a death or decayed animals or decayed plants. So, something like that. See here, this is our grazing food chains, which is consumed from the living oak leaf. This is our detritus food chain, which is consumed from the dead oak leaf. So, this is the difference between these two. Uh, so, sources of energy in both uh, food chains are different. Yes, right. Because uh, here, living things, uh, living food chain. So, here detritus means it is a dead or decayed uh, material. So, second one, grazing food chain is found only in terrestrial ecosystem. So, this is not uh, true. Grazing, grazing food chain is found in terrestrial ecosystem as well as aquatic ecosystem also. So, our option will be 1, that is A. See, here is our explanation. Major difference between two types of food chain, that is a primary source of energy which in case of grazing food chain becomes uh, comes from the living plant biomass. See, underline this point. Uh, while other, that means uh, dead organic matters are consumed by the detritus food chain. And second one, both the food chains are found in terrestrial as well as aquatic ecosystems. And our next question, see this is our grazing food chain and detritus food chain diagram. Please draw this. Next question. Consider the following statements regarding lichens. These are plants forms that combine of algae and fungi in a single symbiotic organisms. Uh, these are useful bioindicators for soil pollution, especially nitrous oxide pollution. Uh, they can be used to measure toxic element pollute, pollutants and radioactive metals. So, here we have to select the correct uh, one. Uh, these lichens are the combination of algae and fungi in a single symbiotic organism. So, this is the definition of lichen. So, this is the right. But this is not useful for soil pollution, this is useful for air pollution. So, second statement is wrong. Uh, they can be used to measure toxic elemental pollutants and radioactive metals. Yes, this is right. So, our uh, answer is uh, 1 and 3 are right statements. So, option C. See, here is our explanation. Lichens are plant that form combination of algae and fungi yes, in a single symbiotic organism. They are abundant in boreal and arctic habitat. Moreover, uh, lichens are act as a bioindicator. See, this is an important term. Please note this one. Because, uh, see here, lichens are act as an indicator for atmospheric pollution. But here we are mentioning soil pollution. So, this is a wrong statement. Bioindicators are the living organism that responds in especially clear way to change uh, in the environment. For example, see, this is a lichen uh, diagram. Uh, if there is uh, any pollution in... Uh, in the surrounding atmosphere means this color of the lichen changes to different colors like uh, brown or black. So, by identifying this change of this color, uh, we can tell that uh, that the environment has lost its impact or climate change occurred. So, these lichens are useful for bioindicator for air pollution. So, these lichens also used to measure toxic element pollutants and the radioactive metal. 
So our option will be C. And our next question. The Sisseri River Bridge was recently in news. Consider the following statement. This bridge is, uh, first one, this bridge is inaugurated on the Sisseri River in the East Siang district of Assam. Second one, it will provide connectivity between uh, Daibang, and, uh, Daibang Valley and Siang. Third one, it was constructed by project uh, Brahmanak of Borders Road Organization. This is the important one, BRO. Uh, here you have to select the right one. See, this bridge is inaugurated. Yes, this is the right one on the Sisseri River in the East Siang district of Assam. No, these are wrong because it is uh, inaugurated in Arunachal Pradesh. See here. But our second and third, third statements are right. So, our option will be D. See the explanation. Sisseri River Bridge is inaugurated in Arunachal Pradesh. But here we are mentioned that it is in the district of Assam. So, that is a wrong statement. See, this is a 200 meter long bridge. It is located at lower Daibang Valley in Arunachal Pradesh. Moreover, the peoples of the Arunachal Pradesh, they demanded this bridge. Because in order to cut the travel time from uh, Pashiga to rowing by about 5 hours. This was constructed by project Brahmanak of a BRO, Borders Road Organization. See, this is about a BRO projects. There are four projects are there. Bartek, Arunank, Brahmanak, Udayak. These are the four projects of uh, BROs. So, next question will be, last question, last and final question. TX2, uh, T cross 2 initiative was recently in the news uh, is related to a, double the number of cheetah across their geographical areas. B, double the number of snow leopard. C, double the number of wild tigers. D, double the number of lion. Here, our option will be, this is a direct question. Our answer will be C. This is a double the number of tigers across the geographical areas. See here. See, it was launched by WWF at uh, 2010 in Russia during the Petersburg, uh, during, sorry, during the tiger summit. Under this, 13 tiger ranger, uh, range countries are there. These countries agreed to double the world tiger population by 2022, uh, which is the year of tiger in the Chinese calendar. These 13 countries are uh, this, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Cambodia, China, India, Indonesia, Lao, Pidyar, Malaysia, Myanmar, Nepal, Russia, Thailand and Vietnam. These are the countries. And moreover, these projects uh, aim to drive the political momentum and moreover, our I aim, their aim was to ensure there is a space for both tigers and peoples in future. Uh, this was achieved by reducing this. That means to achieve zero poaching, we have to reduce the poaching or uh, we have to eliminate the poaching and also we have to tackle this illegal wildlife trade. Uh, by achieving this, we can easily create a space for both tigers and peoples in future. So that's the end of our session. So thank you so much for your valuable time. Thank you so much.